So the story is this: uh, in 1994, 95, I I was just done with my studies and uh, I went to the UK and worked there for university as a sysadmin and that university had I think about 15,000 students and one 64 kbit link to the internet and I was working for central system management network management and uh, that internet link was really busy and also not exceptionally stable and so people within the university which was sort of well connected with, with 10 megabyte megabit uh, ethernet links uh, they were interested in knowing whether the the uh, the link to the internet was actually working or just uh, broken and uh, because the effect was it was just very slow and so uh, I, I wrote a software called mrtg uh, back then which recorded the the traffic on that link and made it available on a web page. And the MRTG is, uh, is, was also a time series database, very simple implementation, just with a, a log file containing timestamps and uh, traffic. Um, I think it was, uh, or it is, tra uh, bytes per second. And uh, the what happened is that this got pretty popular. MRTG, you can still find it a lot around these days if you Google for it. And uh, it's also still available, you can download it. And I found that people were using this for other things than network, network monitoring, even though it's very limited in the way they just um, can do two, two uh, values, input and output, and uh, has fixed, uh, way of handling data so it, it always records in five minute intervals and then after a certain amount of time it goes to longer intervals and it consolidates and this a lot of stuff it does everything like hard-coded or mostly hard-coded in the program and uh, since i wrote or i worked on this so much i tended to um, think about it a lot and i found that it might be a good idea to start uh, writing a program which just extracted the time series part from this thing and made it available standalone so that people could use it to implement all sorts of time series monitoring and data storage uh, applications. And that's how I got started on writing RD tool. And um, in 99, well, I think I started, I, I don't know, the end of 98. And, or I think I think I, I wrote a lot of it in, in early 99 in, in uh, while I was on skiing holiday, instead of skiing, not sure anymore. <laughs> anyway, in, in summer, I was, I went to the US on a sort of sabbatical or work exchange. Some guy from the US came to Switzerland working my job and I went to the US working for um, the for Kaida, which is an internet research outfit in San Diego. And they sort of told me that while I was there, it was it was fine with them if I worked on RD tool. And so I spent my I think it was there for three months. And I work. I finished writing RD tool while while I was there, and uh, published version one. Uh, at that time, it was my first sort of large C program. And if you look at the code, I think you can still see that it's not written by somebody who really knows C all that well. <laughs> <laughs> but I I decided to write it in C because it's fast and it's it can be easily embedded into other languages. Because if I'm free to choose my language, I mostly choose Perl. And so I also wrote the Perl extension, which then uh, um, uses RD tool as a library to integrate into Perl. I think making a living based on a infrastructure tool like RD tool is really hard because people just take this for granted 
So even though there are literally hundreds of thousands of people who are using RD tool, I don't get anything for it except some recognition. So people, when they read my name, they maybe saw the name of, on a on a graph because the graphs which get generated, they have my name on it. Sort of that's my payback. <laughs> uh, but uh, I sometimes use it in projects, which I do. But um, no, it doesn't. It's not a central element of my income at all. It used, there used to be a time when uh, I think in, in the early 2000s, when many sort of new internet companies were around, some were building a product based on RD tool and they, they took out sponsorship contracts for RD tools. So I think in the best years, I maybe made about, I don't know, 50 to 70,000 francs from sponsorship. Okay. But uh, otherwise, uh, nowadays, it's, it's nothing. I, I think that the normal use case is still network monitoring of some sort. Yeah. Um, but People are also using it for weather stations, or uh, I also know that people are tracking satellite, um, satellite, uh, I think, I don't know what exactly they're tracking, they're, they're, the way they're, they're moving in their, in their orbits, the distance from Earth, I have no idea what exactly it is that they're using, but uh, that they're tracking, but people have been using RD tool for quite a lot of different things. What, what I find is that there is sort of a niche of people who know about it. So uh, while there are time series in other uh, subject matters, well, in, in other scientific topics, uh, those people do not know that RD tool exists. So they solve their time series problems using other tools. Whereas in networking, people know that RD tool exists. And so they think when they have a time series problem, they think of RD tool. And uh, yeah, but I think that's made that since you can use it without without uh, publishing it without sending me money yeah. i have not really an idea where mm -hmm. what people are using it for okay. one thing which i think rd tool is uh, very well suited for is, is systems which run for a long time because the way you set up rd tool databases it includes the deletion of all data that's sort of mandatory you can't set up an rd tool database which just stores data forever it will always uh, also delete the old data. Yeah. And so when you set up a system, uh, which I don't know, monitors something and you do it with RD tool, you'll find that this thing just keeps on running and never fills up the disk or anything. And yeah. so uh, you find many systems which have been there for like ages and ages and never been touched and they just continue running because there is no need to, to do anything. Whereas other time series or Many of the modern time series databases, they are more like classical databases, which store data and they have, and just keep storing it. And then you have to do special things in order to lose the old data. They, they normally can lose the old data, but you have to do something for it. Whereas in RD tool, it's sort of, you just can't not lose the data. I don't follow the market that closely. I've, I've done some work with InfluxDB mm -hmm. and uh, found that sort of the appeal of, of Influx and I guess of many of the others is that you don't have to decide that many things in advance. Mm -hmm. They're more like, um, like SQL databases in a way that you, you can just sort of drop your data in and then start analyzing it. And with RD tool, you really have to decide a lot of things right from the start. And it asks you a lot of stuff about how your data is, how long do you want to keep it? And, and if you're just doing research or if you're in a, in a highly dynamic environment, RD tool is hard to use because it asks, it wants to know so many things which you probably have no idea about at the start of your project. And so, especially for research situations, um, we're not exactly sure what you're what you're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. RD tool can be hard to use, and I think that 
that is so especially today where many people go into this field who have no clue about system management and and scalability and all these things they just they just have data and want to organize it somehow and, and then many of these newer uh, time series databases are much easier to use for for that application the yeah. the cost on the other hand is that or at least my my use of influx showed that for the the things i wanted to use influx uh, it let me store the data very easily it was really a breeze but then when i uh, wanted to get the data back, back out again i found that it was really hard to get it out in the way i wanted it out and it became very slow when it then finally got it out the way i wanted it and that's because I didn't know about how to properly put the data in in the first place. If I had known, I could make influx very fast, but it was sort of too late. And so with RD tool, it's not that flexible in taking your data in, but once it's in, it's, it always, it's always very fast to get it out again. But you have to think ahead, whereas with influx, you can think later and, and sort of yeah, bang on your head that you didn't think earlier. I think sort of the basic or my my personal reason for for collecting time series data is that i want to know what the normal case looks like when i run into trouble i can then look at the data how it was before in order to to figure out what is going wrong that's sort of the the troubleshooting aspect of time series but there are many other applications like uh, scalability or, or seeing growth in data and, and planning ahead and so on and but that's been around for for a long time what, what i see nowadays is that people are collecting like just huge amounts of data and there isn't really an easy way to figure out where the interesting data is in that huge mountain of data and so automatic system whether systems or whether you call it machine learning or whatever but which analyzes that data and shows you the interesting bits out of that huge mountain of data which you can collect. Uh, I think that's the interesting yeah. part of the, of the of the whole system. And then the the time series storage as such is just well, it's guided by what what you need in the front end. Yeah. I mean, there is a, a large collection of of time series uh, storage tools available. Yeah. So I, I, I wonder whether there is that much innovation to be done on the back end. The, I've been thinking about writing the glorious new RD tool version two, which and, and so on. I've been talking to people. And there's even some money, or I don't know whether the money would still be around that people who were willing to invest. But it's sort of it's a crowded marketplace, and I don't know yeah. whether uh, yet another new time series database would be worth the investment yeah. you in order to to make money from it or to to justify the investment there would have to be also a very clever way of of analyzing that data and figuring out the interesting parts of the data with as little user interaction as possible because it's still so that the, the people who look at that data they're normally way too expensive for doing that yeah. Thank you.